Welcome to What's Going On. I'm Jimmy Young, your host, and seeing that this is LGBTQ History Month, I have Kelly Metzner of the Adirondack North Country Gender Alliance here, so where we can just have a casual conversation about the history of the gay, lesbian, bi, transgender, queer community. <laughs> I like to see you say that three times fast, Kelly. <laughs> uh, I I go a little further and I call it the alphabet soup. Okay. L LGBTQQI two S P A A plus. <sighs> yeah, and you, and over the years they have added letters. They have letters. And to be quite honest. After you get past Q, I'm lost. Uh, so basically, we have uh, lesbian, gay, bi, trans, queer, questioning, intersex, pansexual, two spirit, al um, asexual, and allies. And I always include allies in our group because we live in community. Uh, they love and support us. And uh, we are thankful for the allyship and people we have in our lives. And they are as much a part of our community as I think uh, any other letter uh, of the alphabet soup. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But um, over recent, um, you could say over the past, really since uh, mid to late 60s, early 70s, the LGBTQ community has been mobilizing more in a political sense, advocating for equal rights. Um, that has always been a hallmark of the LGBTQ community. But, um, one thing that everybody, um, you know, I'm going to bring it up here just real quick, that um, everybody has been aware of, or at least known through history or other things, is that at one point in time, it was illegal and it was criminal to commit acts according to your sexual preference or your gender identity. That meant being thrown into jail or being executed or in the case of the transgender community, committed to an essay in asylum. In my little wanderings, I came across an interesting thing. All of these laws were under a blanket one called for unlawful carnal knowledge. We all know it by the acronym. Um, I'm not going to say it. Um, but part of this little wandering that I did, and it lists the states and the territories of when. Each state decriminalized homosexual acts. The first territory to do that was America and Samoa, and that was 1889. The last to do it was the United States Armed Forces in 2011. Of 
up until 1980, it was still a criminal offense to perform or be involved, you know, anything resembling homosexuality, um, transgender. So things have progressed and changed over time. These were the sodomy laws. Right. And that was under a blanket one. It was commonly known as for unlawful carnal knowledge. That covered also sodomy, pedophilia, and others. And being gay or lesbian or transgender was considered to be more in the religious just perspective as blasphemy. But we have come a long way. Um, the Stonewall riots, the first gay, uh, first pride uh, celebrations, Um, though, England was just as much like us, this is from the English heritage. There's stories of the past. But also, they're performers and writers. Everybody's favorite, Freddie Mercury. Virginia Woolf was a lesbian. Oscar Wilde. So there is a lot of history going back down into antiquity when it comes to LGBTQ community. We have existed throughout time, throughout history, throughout cultures, throughout the world. Mm -hmm. Going back to the ancient Romans and the ancient Greeks. Right. So this, for many people, is just part of the human existence. Mm -hmm. And it was basically Christianity that outlawed this. Right. Um, during the Renaissance period, well, during the Middle Ages, that's when uh, the church started to clamp down on homosexual acts. It wasn't until the Renaissance when they really ramped that all up by though, taking those that um, were gay and burning them at the stake because they were considered to be possessed by demons. Which, thank God we don't get burned at the stake these days. <laughs> there you go. You know, lose a lot of people that way, besides the pandemic going on right now. There you go. But I think it's just, a matter of accepting people for who they are and realizing that we were all created this way. None mm -hmm. of us chose to be lesbian, gay, bi, trans, or any other uh, letter of the alphabet. Um, mm -hmm. We were created this way in the early stages of our development. Right. And you, you can't change. Um, 
and I think it's more of an acceptance of who we are as people and accepting people for who they are, who they say they are, and um, just being respectful. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, without a doubt. Um, going back into our own, um, even our own history in the United States, there were openly gay members of the colonial army. And there, I keep, I'm forgetting his name. The one that they figured that everybody assumes to be our first gay president. And I forget what his name is. Do you have any clue? Having a clue. No, okay. No clue. Well, somebody will probably mention that. And it's, it's actually interesting you bring that up because uh, one of the things I've been working on uh, with the Gender Alliance uh, Facebook page through this month is trying to put up different articles on um, our LGBTQ past. And it's actually kind of funny that you brought that up because the post I put up uh, just this evening, which will be more for tomorrow, uh, talks about our first gay first lady. And uh, that is, according to this article, uh, Rose Cleveland. So that would probably be Grover Cleveland's wife. Uh, right, sorry, right. Uh, 1893. So uh, I, I think this is uh, an interesting article to put up. Uh, we'll be doing as many of these uh, as I can uh, throughout the month of October. Uh, I really like the article that you just um, showed and mm -hmm. i would uh encourage you to um post that to the gender alliance facebook also uh maybe uh for thursday um we we have one going up for tomorrow um so for uh, maybe thursday that would be a great one to uh post uh to our facebook page and, and of course that uh, will be for history month also so would would really enjoy you doing that Mm hmm. Um, but moving along, this is from CNN. LGBT, and this I recommend everybody that's watching this video to take a look at. I will be posting this out too. But a timeline starting in the early 1900s of LGBTQ history. Starting off in 1924 with the Society for Human Rights. Going through right to oops where we are now. I think that's We're, great. I like that. And I would encourage you to post that up to our page on maybe on Friday. Yeah. So we have but, one um, page going up every day. So uh, I, I would love you to post both of those uh, to our Gender Alliance page. But let me just. Recent history, not too long ago, April 4th, 2017, the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals rules that civil rights protections prohibit workplace discrimination against LGBTQ employees. Since then, with this administration, we have seen an erosion of LGBTQ rights. or an attempted erosion. Mm. Uh, the courts have 
for the most part, upheld uh, a lot a lot of those rollbacks that the uh, federal uh, administration has tried to um, pass through. So mm -hmm. um, I've been very thankful for the Supreme Court we had, note the past tense had, mm -hmm. and I'm very, very uh, afraid and scared, literally, uh, for uh, what's to come uh, with this new conservative justice being appointed. Right. But, um, this was a win for trans rights back in 1976. I remember it as if it happened yesterday. Um, a lot, not a lot of people have heard of Renee Richards, which within the trans community kind of gets me. I can understand in the overall LGBTQ community, but in 1975, ophthalmologist and professional tennis player Renee Richards is banned from competing in the Women's U.S. Open because of a woman born a woman rule. Richards challenged the decision in 1977 in the New York Supreme Court rules in her favor. And she was able to compete in the 77 US Olympic, though she was defeated. I remember that very well. Mm -hmm. I was in high school at that time. I, I totally remember that story. Um, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. And it was a win. It was a win for the uh, trans community. And it was the first ever trans person that a lot of us connected up with. In modern time, yeah. Yeah. But um, there has also Before been- that, there was people like uh, Virginia Price, who was mm -hmm. a leader. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, there, there have been many leaders uh, in our community over time, but certainly uh, Renee uh, was, um, in, in the 70s, a very prominent uh, person. Huh. Yeah. But, um, when it comes to our overall history it is still being discovered um that's all i can say there's a lot of information out there um it's just that you need to really look for it you know, I didn't know about the whole thing with, well, I can't really say I didn't know about the two spirits. Um, I was aware of those individuals that were referred to that. Um, in the movie, Little Big Man, starring Dustin Hoffman, there is an Indian character in that, that was Two-Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that character had a thing for Dustin Hoffman, which made it kind of comical. Two-Spirit peoples have been, with our uh, Native and First Nation people, uh, Native American in the US, First Nation in Canada. They were revered by their tribes. It was felt that they encompassed both the masculine and the feminine spirit in one physical person. And that gave them extra knowledge, extra wisdom, extra insight. And they, 
they were often leaders in their tribes and not every single native people's nation had or identified uh, two-spirit uh, individuals. Um, some nations had recognized that, uh, some did not. Uh, but two-spirit people were always revered in the tribes, in the nations um, that recognized them. Mm -hmm. And, and so that all was wiped out, so much was wiped out when white Christian missionaries and settlers uh, mm -hmm. right across North America, just and, decimating their culture. Yeah, and with them, they brought up along their religious beliefs, no matter how strict they may be. And, and our uh, First Nation and Native cultures, they lost their heritage. And, and I know that that is um, something that they are very, very upset about to this day as to what mm -hmm. happened to their culture. Yeah. Um, you know, it's just like if um, an alien race was to come to Earth and impose themselves onto us. That's a topic for another evening. I fact. know, but I'm uh, I'm just saying as an example. I I totally understand what you're saying. Uh, that could be a, a topic for another night and another discussion. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, religion also has always been a cornerstone to prejudice and bias when it comes to those in the LGBTQ communities. Mm -hmm. um, during the um, Roman Empire, homosexuality was encouraged. It wasn't until Constantine and the Holy Roman Empire that that started to go away, which led to the Dark Ages where the church well, the Roman Catholic Church had complete control up until the end of the Renaissance. Then you had the Inquisitions, which also included those in the LGBTQ community because they were seen as possessed or witches or whatever. And then we had the Protestant Reformation. Mm -hmm. And I don't know what the timeline of all that is, but many of these things happen at that time. And uh, of course, uh, Martin Luther revolted against the Catholic Church, and uh, there were a lot of breakaway uh, denominations. Mm -hmm. uh, so that underlying Christian moral sense of right and wrong and how to live your life uh, persuade, per, uh, continued no matter what the denomination was. Um, yeah. So Christianity, and, and I'm not getting into the positives or negatives of it. Is no, it, no. Historical perspective, uh, Christianity has decimated uh, many, many, many cultures. Mm hmm You know, I, I've always looked at all religions as having their good points and their bad points, regardless. Um, and yeah, their bad points tend to be more than their good points at times. But um, we still prevail. That's the amazing thing about it. Um, You're not going to wipe out people for who they are. No. Nope. This is part of basic human development. Um, I'm not going to call it evolution. I'm just saying a basic human development. Uh, yeah. None of us asked to be born lesbian, gay, bi, trans, or any other letter. It's who we are. It's innate 
to our mm -hmm. uh, creation. Um, you, you're not going to eliminate people with red hair because right. you don't like no. red hair. You're not going to uh, eliminate people who are six foot three and, and taller. You know, people have no say in that. Uh, being uh, lesbian, gay, bi, trans, it's just a normal part of how we were created. And that's what people have to uh, understand and they have to accept, regardless of what a particular religion or faith has to say. Um, treat your neighbor as yourself, love your neighbor as you, uh, yourself, um, and, and really get over it. Um, it's no one's business how someone else lives their life. Uh, live your own, worry about your own, and uh, you, you don't be, need to be looking in your neighbor's windows. Uh, take care of your own place, is mm -hmm. the way I feel. Yeah. Now, um, when it comes to religion, I have to go back to a little brief conversation I had years ago with a priest. Um, and I asked him about revelations and so on and so forth. And he simply said that the Bible should not be taken literally. No. And you have these people that do take it literally, which is an unfortunate thing because that's been our history throughout time is people interpreting things the way that they see it and pushing it on to others. And that caused the LGBTQ community to actually go into hiding underground um, during the mid to late 1800s into even in as recently as the 60s you had an entire community that was completely hidden from public eye Well, we hid for many reasons. Uh, one, mm -hmm. it was not deemed socially acceptable. Uh, you could be fired from your jobs. Um, as you said, uh, you know, we, we could be assaulted, we could have been murdered, we could, uh, any number of bad things could have happened. Mm -hmm. um, so people, I think, uh, stayed quiet for self uh, protection. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm glad that's that's changing uh, since uh, Stonewall, but we have a lot way, long ways to go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's very true. But um, yeah, um, I remember um, coming but still, across. still, you know, people still live their lives. You know, it mm -hmm. may not have been socially acceptable, but. Uh, oh yeah, I I I. Gay I, couples still live together. It wasn't talked about. It wasn't discussed. Yeah. Um, you know they were sometimes uh, targets of uh, violence, but people still lived their lives uh, back um, turn of the century um, mm -hmm. through the uh, early uh, parts of this century um, yeah. into the fifties and sixties. It was just done very hush hush. Yeah. Yep, very quiet. Um, there were um, certain during the twenties and the thirties. There were certain speakeasies you can kind of say that um, were really the first gay bars. Um, you know, and a lot of them were in New York City at the time. Um, and believe it or not, the mob helped get those set up yeah, but they were set they up more the they, they they were more set up in the way of in some cases as storefronts but the mob saw a value 
They saw a profit. Mm -hmm. They saw value and a profit. Valued customers equals profit. Water down drinks, um, requirements that you had to buy. Um, yes, the, uh, and, and we see that in the Stonewall story. Mm -hmm. And um, there were law enforcement because of the mob, and you're talking early 1900s to mid 1900s. You're talking mob paying off a lot of police. That's always been. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, go back to the mobsters of uh, Chicago in mm -hmm. the Roaring Twenties. Mm -hmm. um, that's always been part of our history. Mm -hmm. Corruption, graft, at, at all levels of mm -hmm. uh, government and law enforcement. Um, uh, humans have greed. Oh, yeah. No way around that. Um, but in recent years, and this is getting more into what our recent, very recent history has been with this administration. Shortly after, in, towards the end of the Obama administration, they had in, that um, the whole thing with don't ask, don't tell, allowing gay and lesbian service members to serve openly. They also ended a ban on transgender people from serving. But in 2017, the Trump administration reimposed a ban on transgender personnel. And why was that? That had, as far as I'm, I'm aware of, it had more to do with Mike Pence. And his very conservative evangelical views on life, living, and uh, morality. So, uh, again, it goes back to uh, Christianity or very conservative uh, views. views. Mm -hmm. So, that is but where it's, no, we... it's really no one's business. Yeah. Uh, many conservative Christians, they will blast uh, someone for being LGBTQ, but they're on their second or third wife. Yeah. And um, these evangelicals? Um, some. We're, we're, we can't say all. No, but I'm referring to the more notable ones. That have well, been I, caught in sex scandals that go on TV and praise the Lord all the time. Human, human condition. Um, so that's why I say clean your own house before you go looking into others. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. don't force your beliefs on to other people. Mm -hmm. True, 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 true. But um, if you'd like to continue this conversation a little later. That would be good because we're getting out of history month. Uh, time. Right. Okay, so um, this is gonna be the end of this sec uh, session and we'll be back again with another one. So, so let, let us celebrate LGBTQ History Month. We have a lot to learn. Um, we need to learn our history. We need to have it taught in our schools. The contributions that uh, members of our community have made over the decades that should not be hidden from us. Um, and short of 
being financially able to uh, attend college courses, um, it's not always easy to pick up that history. And uh, the only th course we do have is to try and learn it the best we can on the internet or by uh, LGBTQ groups. Uh, and that's one of the um, projects that the Gender Alliance is uh, trying to promote, uh, especially this month. Uh, I think we need to take a bigger uh, stance on promoting our history as the LGBTQ group here in the uh, Tri-County area. Uh, and um, that's one of my missions for October is uh, bringing that to the forefront so people can learn our history and the proud heritage that we do have. So that, that is one of our goals uh, for this month. Um, so I hope uh, people will uh, visit the Adirondack North Country Gender Alliance Facebook page. I encourage you to uh, put up those two articles that uh, you had this evening, uh, one for Thursday, one for Friday. That would be fantastic. And um, let's take some more opportunity to learn our history and uh, promote it. Uh, so our young people don't have to feel shame, they don't have to feel guilt, and they can feel pride in who they are going forward. Okay, so that's it for this segment. Um, be back again with Kelly. Everyone have a nice day, evening. Whatever. Dinner.